The 10 base T1S multi sensor actuator demo showcases a network of several sensors and actuators as it might be used in the automotive area and as well in industrial applications. The system is made up of six nodes on top of the red board, which have various sensors and actuators, and a seventh node mounted underneath the display, which acts like a central head unit. The head unit collects and processes all information from the sensors, shows them on the display, and one can control all functions of the demo by buttons on the display. Instead of connecting all nodes by a star-like topology to the head unit, this demo uses the new 10 base T1S multi-drop bus topology, which saves a lot of cabling, weight and cost. Let's have a closer look at the individual functions. First, I want to demonstrate the tire pressure sensor. It is activated by touching the button on the left side of the display and we can see that the picture on the display changes. The right back tire of the car is now shown in green, which means that the tire pressure is okay. And also on top of the car you can see a pressure indicator showing around 1000 millibars at the moment. There are two additional optical pressure indicators located in separate nodes on the 10 base T1S network. On the one side the green circle on the small OLED display here in the middle row indicates that the tire pressure is ok. And additionally two LEDs on the iSelect module are shining also in green color. Next to the OLED display there is a small mechanical pressure sensor and when I press firmly with my finger on it, the tire pressure and color on the display are changing to red, the isolate module now shines in red and the OLED display shows a red circle, which all means that the tire pressure is currently too high. When I release my finger the pressure value goes down and all the optical indicators are going back to green color. The second function, a proximity sensor, is activated by the second button on the display. And we can see that the display has changed again, showing red stripes around the car as well as the distance in millimeters. This all means that there is enough space in front of the car. Using the proximity sensor in the third node, one can simulate the distance to an obstacle simply by approaching the sensor with my hand. One can see that the distance value on the display decreases down to zero, while at the same time more and more red LEDs on the isolate module are shining up. On the display the red stripes are disappearing, which means that the distance to an object becomes critical. Touching the third button on the display activates the light control and all LEDs are off at the beginning. When I set the rotary switch to headlights, the display shows head and tail lights and there are 8 white LEDs simulating the headlight and 2 red LEDs simulating the tail light. When I turn the switch to parking lights, the light beam on the display becomes yellow as well as the 8 LEDs. Turning on the rear fog lights changes the fan and LEDs to colorful mode. In the automatic mode, the head and tail lights on the display are switched on or off based on the data which comes from an ambient light sensor via the 10 base T1S network when I darken the sensor with my hand. Here you can see the light beams switching on and off when I move my hands. After activating the window regulators, four control elements appear on the display which can move the currently selected window up or down on the display and simultaneously change the position of the corresponding steering servo above via the 10 base T1S network. Besides, the window regulators can be controlled by the joystick. First I need to activate one of them on the display. Then I can move the joystick up and down to slide the window on the display and move the corresponding steering servo. The control data of the joystick is sent to the servo control unit via the 10 base T1S network and also to the head unit which controls the display. When the air conditioning is activated, the display shows the interior of a car. A temperature control and control for the fan speed, as well as the current values of temperature and humidity. The current temperature value of 21 degrees Celsius is also shown here on the small OLED display, which gets data from the weather sensor via the 10 base T1S network. Now when we turn up the target temperature to, let's say, 32 degrees, the animation of the fan looks red, which means the air conditioning blows hot air into the car. 
when we set the airflow to a higher level, the fan rotates faster and the display now shows big red arrows symbolizing hot air streams of the HVAC system to heat up the interior of the car. On the other side, when we turn down the target temperature, let's say to 10 degrees, the color of the fan and of the air streams on the display both are changing to blue. This symbolizes that the HVAC is now cooling down the interior. Now the seat adjustment function has been activated. When I move the joystick in a certain direction, this movement is shown as a green arrow on the OLED display and also on the main display. Control data from the joystick node is sent via the 10Base-T1S network to the head unit node and to the node which has the OLED display. Besides, the seat adjustment can also be controlled by the gesture touch module. It must be activated once by pressing the small button on the SAMD21 controller board and now I can control the seat by moving my hands from left to right or from up and down. The last function of this demo which I want to show to you is the steering servos. This is not a typical automotive function, but it shows that control data from the head unit is sent via the 10 base t one s network to another node to control the steering servos. The start positions of the four steering servos are shown on the display and when I touch the display somewhere, all servos are looking to the point where the microchip logo appears. When I move the logo, the real steering servos and their counterparts on the display are all looking simultaneously to the microchip logo. Even if we let the logo jump around on the display, there is hardly any visible delay between the movements on the display and the real movements of the steering servos. The delay due to the 10 base T1S network is very small compared to the processing time of sensor and actuator signals. Let's have a look at the components of this demo. The entire demo consists of seven nodes which are connected by a 10 base T1S network. There are six nodes mounted on top of the red board having a SAM D21 controller board each. These nodes are almost identical and just differ from each other by the type of actuator or sensors which are attached. The seventh node acts like a central head unit and is mounted underneath the display. It has a SAM A5D35 microcontroller running Linux with QT5 GUI and it controls the display. The node is connected to the 10 base T1S network by a T1S USB adapter. On each of the nodes on top, always in slot number 3, there is an additional SAM E53 board which connects the node via RMII to the LAN 8670 and to the network. The network is made up of simple unshielded twisted pair cabling using a multi-drop bus architecture where each node acts like a small stub. Each physical end of the bus needs a proper termination. One of them is activated by two jumpers which can be seen here at the server control node. The bus then goes from node to node having no termination. The other physical end of the bus is on the network interface of the head unit that is beneath the red board and cannot be seen now. Let's have a look at the different sensors and actuators. Here on top we have the node which controls the steering servos. In the middle row there is a weather sensor providing temperature, air pressure and humidity. The second slot houses an adapter for controlling the fan speed and its LED illumination. Then we have a proximity sensor, an ambient light sensor, a small OLED display, a mechanical pressure sensor and on the right side a joystick. The node on the lower edge controls the isolate module and the gesture touch module. Thanks for watching and listening.